Hey, what's up everybody? Um, am I on? Am I on? Uh, let me know if you guys are in here. Send me a message. If you are, let me know and I can get started. See anybody? Hmm. There it is. Okay. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? All right. I wonder why it says zero viewers. Okay. All right. So get some hands up in here, you guys. Okay. Cool. Um. Hey, what is up, Sanjay? Uh. Okay, okay. All right, guys. So, um, welcome back to the stream. I'm Mike Thompson, if you are new to the stream and don't know who I am, I am an illustrator um, and ZBrush user slash enthusiast uh, slash uh, cool guy. So, um, uh, I think last time I talked to you guys, I was working on a zombie Captain Marvel. Hello, hello. Um, and uh, yes, it is live in Twitch, Lexter. Um, so um, yeah, so I stopped last time. I uh, was working on uh, the idea was like a Captain Marvel, um, but maybe putting a zombie, like a uh, Marvel zombie spin on it, which would be kind of cool. So, I have uh, some reference here from Pure Ref. Uh, what is up, Mark? And, um, and so I'm just gonna keep on, keep on pressing on. So, um, if I turn off my solo, now I, I did a little bit, I usually, after I'm done with the stream, I am kind of hyped up, so I keep working on it on my own for a couple hours before I get back to regular work. And uh, hello. And so, um, and so I have, uh, I have a little more progress. It's like a little more finished than the last time you saw. Still got a lot of anatomy stuff to work out here, but you can see she's looking kind of like Storm right now. Um, and I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with the base, but I had an idea of doing like an explosion type of a thing, like she's flying through it. Um, the pose on the, the hand and the fist and all that stuff is not really, it's not really done. Um, but this is what I have so far, right? So I'm just going to pick it up from here. Where did my, why did Restream not stay on top? Hold on a second. Let me change my settings. What is up, Attentive Slug? Where are my settings? Settings, settings. I want to keep this on top. Boom. There it is. Back to chat. All right, excellent. There that is. Let's make it a little bigger and move it over out of the way. All right. All right, all right. So um, I am in Maryland and we're getting hammered with snow right now. So it's cold. It's cold outside. So I'm a little chilly. All right. Um, cool. So let's get into this thing. I'm just going to pick back up with her. The way I have this set up right now is there's a whole lot of kind of part kit bashing. Normally I wouldn't have this many parts, but I have like her head is on one layer. I re her body. And so the the suit is on like another layer. The hands are another. When I say layer, I mean subtool. Uh, the hands are their own thing because I cut them off of, uh, you know, another base mesh and pasted them on here. So... Um, stuff is kind of unorganized right now, but that's not a big deal. I can fix that all later, right? This is not the way I normally work. I'm usually much more kind of methodical about how I go through things. Um, but for now, um, for now, I'm, uh, I don't know, I thought I'd go a little less, little less uptight, a little less buttoned up today. Buttoning down today. All right. 
So, um, got my ref here. So, move this over. And let me know if the. Oh, Tony Leonard with the Japanese characters. What's up, dude? Angry Monday, what's up? Guess what day it is? Hump day, son. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you are not in the States, we have the really uh, silly commercial with uh, there's a camel who, uh, who gets hyped about Wednesday because it's hump day. So there we have it. All right. Anyway, let's keep going on with this thing. Um, I'm going to work on her anatomy today. And it's it's kind of, let me look around. Let me just take a look here. It's... Uh, Needs work, you know what I mean? Like, proportions are all over the place, but it's a little tighter than it was before. So if I come over here, is this the one I want? Yeah, that's the one I want. Definitely, oh, it's got layers. Okay, so last time I was working, I had layers. Uh, and if you have layers, they have to be recording if you are going to continue working. And if I turn them off, let's see, so if I turn this off, you can see I started doing a little bit of tweaking of her her pose um, and it right now she's tilted more than I want her tilted but the reason I did that is I wanted to keep her head um, I wanted to keep her head uh, symmetrical right so if I go back to my subtool and turn on everything. You can see their head is still very much symmetrical. It's still centered. So if I go through and I start working on her face, turn on symmetry, you see I have the dots on both sides of her head where they're supposed to be, right? Um, now the thing of it is I have her head on its own layer. So what I, I mean, I'm sorry, on its own subtool. So what I can do is I can twist the body and kind of play around with the, the, the you know, the, the way that this body is laid out. I just didn't want it as stiff as it was before, if that makes sense. If you guys have any questions about anything, just let me know, I'll be happy to answer. All right, but anyway, let's get back to figuring out these, this, this body, because right now it's, this is without looking at anything really. All right, let's, just uh, start recording again, turn off symmetry, and now I can go through and sculpt. I should be able to anyway. Can I? Hmm. Let's turn on the clay spin. Okay, dynamic is turned off. Can I sculpt? Why does it look like it's not doing anything? Solo. That's not good. It's not doing anything. Hmm. Fan Jones. All right. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, do I have a mask? Let's see. Okay, maybe it was masked. Yeah, that must have been it. All right, cool. Yeah. So what I uh, what I normally do when I'm when I'm sculpting anatomy is kind of rough in the the muscles like everybody else does, right? That's not anything different. But what I'll notice is that you know for for females it'll probably be too harsh, um, and they'll start looking a little mannish. Uh, so I usually go back in and soften it out, right? So you want them to look heroic but at the same time you don't want her to look so ripped that she she's a man baby it's not what you want that's not what I want I don't know if you want that I'm not judging but that's not what I'm looking for on, on Captain Marvel also it's nice to get in some of the uh the fat deposits on the female to make her feel like a 
more a woman too. She can still be muscular and toned, but still have, you know, be uh, soft in the places where she should be soft. So my other screen, I have some more reference that is uh, probably a little much for YouTube. So I'm gonna keep it on the other screen. But it's all coming from uh, it's all coming from my <clears throat> my Pinterest page, my anatomy page. She's a little thicker than Carol Danvers would be, but I'll, I'll soften her out later. You know, probably take away a little bit of the mass. I just want to make sure that it looks the way I want it to look, and then I can come back in and refine it later. And I do that with guys, too, when I'm sculpting them. For her abdomen I don't know if there's gonna be like hard surfacey stuff there so it's you know it's just kind of vague and right now it's a little hard surface ish hard surface e what are those things let me know if the music is too loud or annoying this is a new um, it's like a new provider that I'm using with royalty free stuff so I can't vouch for how good it is if there's a track that just is ridiculous let me know I'll skip it uh, I had her in T-pose for a little while but I always break that that relaxed like that T-pose early because for me, it uh, it really really helps to you know have some dynamic kind of a movement to it. So with anybody I'm working on, I, I get them out of a T pose really early, and I don't mind doing it twice. You know what I mean? Like if there's the hands are the only part where it's kind of annoying to have to sculpt them twice or pose them twice or whatever. But I just. Uh, Personally, I have better results when I um, when I break the break the T pose, break the symmetry rather. All right. The other thing too that I have to be careful of is I am sculpting her just kind of the way that I think that a person should look. Not, and I got a lot of I got a lot of reference I can look at. So why not use it? What up, Jay? KFC. Take it easy. Yeah, so there's some drumsticks right now. It's like Brie Larson with a whole lot of CrossFit. Thank you. 
If I start concentrating and getting quiet, just somebody ping me in the in the chat because I uh, I'm not really a big walk and chew gum at the same time type person. I gotta do one thing or the other. So I can be incredibly engaging and and uh, and you'll have a jacked up looking model. Nobody wants that. And I'm just switching between the uh, the add and subtract uh, method of building this up and kind of pulling away parts. I'm holding down option if you're new to ZBrush to remove clay and add clay. I, I mean, I think of this as a sculpt, right? Like, so you're just taking away some from some areas and putting it in other areas until you start to get the right forms. until it doesn't look ridiculous. When it stops looking silly, you know you're there. What's up, Siege Chaos? Where's the usual suspects? What is up, Danny? Oh, um, all right, so I tell guys like Jay that I, I see multiple times a week and Tony and all these guys that I see in, in like Hangouts that I started collecting on the cheap, uh, like digital 4K movies now, just to build out my, my uh, library. So I ended up getting, uh, and I know I'm gonna get like <laughs> slammed for this, but I ended up picking up the X-Men Apocalypse movie because I was like, whatever, man, I'll get it. It was cheap, like five bucks. But um, I watched it again last night and I just couldn't get over the fact that the dude they cast as Apocalypse <laughs> looks like he's like five feet tall in the movie, like the whole time. I'm like, nobody thought that that was a weird cast. I'm just sitting here thinking of it now because I did a movie poster for that that film. They didn't use it, but uh, I painted one for the for the, the company, and uh, they had me paint Apocalypse like all big and menacing and all this other stuff. And then you look at him in the in the movie, and literally every other person in the in the film is taller than he is for 95 percent of the film. Pretty funny. More HD than ZBrush. My camera. Okay. Okay. Like that film. Yeah. I mean, you know. I was talking to my buddy. I have. A, I'm gonna start doing a podcast. Like I keep talking about. It. I have a friend from college that we've been friends for a super long time, and we used to just get together in the in the student union and just do like serious nerd talk about comic books and all this, that, and the other. And uh, now that there's you know all these films and all this stuff that's going on with uh, you know Disney buying, finally getting the rights to the X Men and and Fantastic Four and all that. You know, we've been talking about, uh, you know, how the how those films are going to look when they're done properly. So, if there's anybody in here that worked on X Men, I apologize. I know it's not your fault. All right, let's fix this arm because it's looking jacked up.
And because I'm an illustrator, I mean, I see sculpting in ZBrush almost like sculpt uh, sketching. So the way that I kind of am building these forms up is it's pretty much just sketching them to me. And then you refine them just like I would with a, with a painting, just working the large areas to the small areas. So when you see something that has like a ton of detail and you're like, hey man, how'd you, how'd you do that? It's like a whole lot of OCD and patience. And coffee. Quiet in here in England, what's up? thing about this setup here with the camera is that I have to have a light like blasting in my face and uh, it's uh, it's not really that great if I don't do that the camera looks terrible Be animating this. Um, I did save a layer with the, uh, or I'm sorry, a subtool with <clears throat> the original static pose. All right. So this was what I started with. This was my model, and uh, I figured that if I need to make anything that's like super complicated, I could go back to this. I think I have sound layers. No. Um, on one of these, I have a layer where it kind of goes back to this pose. But I go through so much when it comes to the um, sculpting the details that I really don't care about the, you know, keeping that. I'm, I'm nine times out of ten, I'm going to have to come back and Resculpt either way, whether I had it in like a, with a rig on it in Maya and then went in and uh, and um, you know kind of fixed it, or if I um, if I just do it the way I'm doing it now. So. I never keep the 
I'm gonna really keep the camera in one spot because it's very easy. Just the same way as it is with, um, you know, with with painting or drawing. Like if you just have the canvas oriented one way, it's very easy to think it looks amazing in one spot, and then you turn it and it looks terrible. So if this was, you know, if this was my uh, If this was my painting, I would be like rotating it and all that other stuff. So I do the same thing with the camera. Just flip it around. But I sound a little not quite as animated as I normally am today. It's it's pretty. It's not a great year so far. I, I'm going to a funeral tomorrow. So I don't want to like bum people out, but that's why. That's why I'm not all super happy and bouncing around and stuff today. It's not that kind of a day. I hope I can go anyway, like this snow might keep me at home. But I don't want that to be the case. Hello, do you ever model from uh, Thank you, thank you very much. Once I get that mask, I can take her head and rotate it and um, and get this body oriented the way I want. So let's kind of hop to that. And the body's still going to be here when I get back. So let's do that. Let's see. Um, guys weren't here I kind of just went and pulled it around with the snake hook a little bit got it looking a little more the way I want I really want it to feel like it's you know kind of flowing there's a picture of her somewhere where it's really kind of like that one it's kind of dope so I'm probably just gonna stretch it out a little bit figure out what I'm gonna do with the hair before I start getting the helmet. One thing I did like about that X-Men movie is the way that they did Storm's uh, mohawk. It was it wasn't just a you know a thin strip. It was like a nice wide kind of area of hair, and I kind of want to do that with her as well. Like the hair is coming up through the helmet, so do something like that. Let's go. I like this picture. Not so much the way they did her nose, but I do like the way they did um, the helmet itself. 
So I'm going to let's see. For the company you chose to pose. Well, they did. This is just for myself. Yeah, four horsemen were, were dope in that actually. Um yeah, so this wasn't, you know, for anybody per se. But I, I, I always just kind of figure out the pose. You know, just look for something that's a little dynamic. And they're getting a little, you know, I am noticing that the more I do with these sculpts, the more natural the poses are looking, and a little less stiff. Like everything else, the more you do them, the less they suck. Other thing too, before I do, I don't want to have a cup hand. I want to spread out the fingers. So I can do that pretty easily. And this is like super low res. So I can, uh, I can go in and polygroup. Let's do that. showing the uh, what I want to be its own uh, group and then I have uh, grow and shrink set up here so it will just kind of hide the uh, the polygons and I can I can go through and select what I want to be its own poly group haven't seen me do this before you'll see in a minute why I'm doing this. have their own poly group now what I can do is I can I want the hand to look like this like she's about to blast something um, kind of like this one all right so I know I want that thumb to be out all the way so I'm going to go ahead and just do that Gizmo 3D. Try to line it up on the rotation point that I want and then start uh, start rotating it. Because it's so low res, um, I don't have to worry about a whole lot of deformation at all. 
which is nice. If I had subdivision layer levels in here, it would be much more janky looking. because they have their own group now if I hold down the alt and click it'll mask everything except for that poly group that I want which is a time saver I just want to have like some just an extreme bin there so once her fingers are a little less cupped, it'll look more tense. Right now it doesn't. Calm, too kind. I need more coffee. Definitely not, not the uh, the king. I might be the. I'll take the duke. The earl, maybe. But, uh, thank you. trying to figure out something to do for you guys that's not the same old deal that I do every time. I kind of do superheroes a lot because I like them. Um, but uh, I haven't done a, a zombie superhero yet. I'm a big fan, if you didn't see the last stream, I'm a giant fan of the Marvel Zombies books. So, uh, because Captain Marvel is going to be out soon, I figured why not do her? I have to sneeze. It's gonna happen. I feel it coming. So I apologize in advance. <coughs> there it is. Thanks. Sorry. Okay. You got to see it in high def goodness. Hands are probably the most tedious thing for me, like sculpting, which is weird because I like detailing gloves. Like I really enjoy doing gloves. I just did gloves for a um, working on this project for Hasbro, 
and the, the characters I'm working on have a lot of gloves. They all have gloves. They all wear gloves. And so uh, I did like a kind of a speed sculpt thing just for reference for my painting, and um, I just had a ball with the gloves. Am I saying gloves a lot? Probably. Just means I like them. So if you hear any squeaking, I bought this new chair that is an ergonomic chair. Uh, it's a lot better than the ones I've had in the past, but the height of it is weird. The armrests come right to the top of my table, so they rub on the table and it's very squeaky all the time. I don't even know if you guys can hear it, but it, it drives me insane. <laughs> you want me to turn off the music, Danny, or find something different? Okay, okay. How do you really feel? Let me see what else they have on here. Uh, got a little ambient.
right. So it's rough, but for now that'll work. We had to start using this new service because we were getting flagged for stuff that wasn't uh, DRM free, Danny, even though it said that it was. So when they do that, they pull the audio. And um, if you're doing a stream where you talk to people for three hours and they pull the audio, that's not good. So we got to try this new joint. Most of her face is going to kind of be torn up from the zombie apocalypse. I still want to make her feel a little more like uh, Captain Marvel to start with. For this mask, what I'm going to do, she doesn't have ears, so first thing I can do is I can lose the ears altogether. And one way I'm going to do that is let's, I'm going to duplicate this. So to, I can get into using a little uh, Sculptures Pro here. So I will clone the head. 
right? I like the I like the geo, but I'm going to kind of screw with it a little bit here. I'm going to turn on my turn on my symmetry. Also going to turn on my Sculptors Pro. And now if I go and uh, get myself a nice big brush, I can just pretty much erase the ears away. Look at that, boom. All right, so now the topology is all changed, but it doesn't matter because I'm gonna retopologize it anyway. It's actually not bad. So I don't want to affect the rest of the head, just the ears pretty much. Right, so I'm just going to mask them. I don't need that to be there. Oops. Okay. So now I can just do this. Right. It still kind of doesn't pay attention to the mask that much, but it's okay. Duplicate this, and I'm going to Z. Re, I'm going to retopo it, re, uh, Z remesh it rather. I'll keep it at same, and let's see what this does. Let's do this actually. Let me subdivide this a few times. Do I have so on? I do have so on. Turn dynamic. Alright, so that's what it looks like with dynamic. Subdivision levels, and then it's a little smoother. And then I can come back and delete the lower, right? I can also turn back on my um, my um, ba -ba 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 Sculptures Pro, and just kind of fix some of these areas where it's looking a little janky. So now I'm going to Z remesh and I'll do this at, it's now 276,000 polys. I'll do this at half. Actually, I'm just going to turn it down to, let's see what this looks like. Adapt. So this is only going to be for the mask, so I don't really mind that her lips got screwed up here. Um, the topology around the eyes, 
I can fix that. She has a mask where it goes above the nose. Or it goes around the nose. Right, so I can use this one. Alright, just bear with me here. I'm going to try something. So I just use the slice curve and um, everything that is red is kind of what I'm going to keep. So if I hide one of these, oops, right, so if I hide that, I don't need the mouth bag either, that can go. Let's auto group, okay, let's delete that. She has a chin piece too. Let's see something. Uh, yeah, I kind of want that chin piece as well. So let's do this. Go back to the slice curve. just in case and delete hidden don't want to do that yeah let's delete hidden try to z remesh it let's keep it the same and uh, turn it the adaptive let's try Oh yeah, it's not bad. Okay, it's actually not bad. All right, so now I can take this and take it back into the other, um, onto the other file, copy and paste it. Copy, go back to this, and paste. back to her we don't need her ears so I actually can delete her ears right because we're not going to see them Yesterday and couldn't get a hold of it. Now they're calling me back. Alright, so I'm going to hide the ears. Delete the hidden. Uh, let's close holds for the hell of it. Heck of it, sorry. Oh, you know what? I have this on. Let's turn this off. Just smooth this out a little bit. Ooh, what's that all about? Hmm. That's not good. 
sleep tag. Uh, do we hit close holes? Close holes. Alright, cool. So now if I turn on solo, the mask is not going to have a problem getting around those ears. Although I'm still going to make the little cuff things. You know what? Maybe I should have kept those. I'll just make the little cuff things. Make them later. Really? Alright, so now I can go in and um, use my Z modeler to give this mask some um, thickness. I'll just set it for Qmesh Polygroup All and just pull it out some. Magic. And I'm just using the move tool to pull it out certain places. I'll have a neck. I kind of like this like segmented kind of neck armor thing she has going on here, so I'll probably make something like that as well. Good afternoon, Hannibal. How are you? How are you doing today? Alright, so I need to see what this thing looks like from the back, because or from the side. She's got this thing going on where it cuts up and around. Feeling that I might just construct this helmet. I might just make this. Because while I like this, it's feeling very organic and I don't want it to. Um, but in the meantime, what I can do is I can go in and start to find some of the some of the shapes that I need here. Let's see.
just want to kind of get this opening here. Nope. No, thank you. This always looks pretty garbage at first, and then eventually you start to find the shapes. to know where they are.
Okay. Um, so for now, we have this wacky looking cylinder. It's okay. Uh, if I just hit mirror, it'll, oops, mirror and weld. Oh. Mirror. Let's do this. Tony Gora, what's up? What's up? I missed a lot of stuff here. What are people talking about? Hola. Fire, fire. Are these email notifications we see in the corner? Yeah, I don't have any. Hopefully, you won't see any of my top secret stuff. That's what they are. <laughs> Knock off Kumbu yeah. This is not good. This is not, uh. I don't like that. What do we have? We got some chiptune music. You guys want to see if there's anything good on that? Dance music. Mixed. What is hype? Let's see this. It's this thing. It's I don't know, we'll see. Alright, delete hidden. I don't really care about anything except for the outer edges here. Brad's deals. All right, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. Fix the mask proportions before adding thickness. Yeah, well, uh, what I always do when I do this, Danny, is I add the thickness, move things around, then most likely um, delete everything except for the uh, the shell, and then I just I just add thickness again. But I that's how I did my Thanos mask. And it's just easier for me to see it. So it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna retopo this whole thing anyway, so it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. I'm a nihilist now, you guys. Let's see, um, blah, 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 blah. forecast for ZBrush. Pain! That's an old, deep, deep Mr. T cut. My prediction is pain. Zombie references because this is gonna be a zombie Captain Marvel. What? Yeah, folder is gonna be dope. Okay. Yeah, I have Maya. Um, in fact, I, uh, Tony Gore and my my buddy Brad have been teaching me Maya. 
So um, I use it from time to time, but I usually just do all my hard surface in here. So like I can just get pretty much what I'm looking for in here. Right in ZBrush. All right, so let's go back to this, right? And now what I would do at this point is just go and grab just the shell and delete hidden, right? And then I will turn off double. And then usually I'll just um, go ahead and Q mesh it back in, right? Like that. And I can even do it thicker so I don't have to worry about there being any issues if I want to print this. You know what I mean? Like it's going to penetrate the face. So now, because I have that, what I can also do is I can go in and add some loops to kind of hold these edges. And I can... Uh, See, I like the topo in most of the areas. It's only in some of these places that I don't love it. Like around the eyes is a, it's kind of a mess. Let's see what happens if I retopo it. Let's copy this. Go back to this one and paste. Let's see what happens if I Z remesh. Keep, I'm going to say keep groups. Yeah, see that's 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 nice. I, I like what it did even at the top there in the back. That's actually it's pretty sweet, you guys. I'm not mad at that at all. All right. So now one thing I could do. Let me know if it's too loud, you guys. Um, now what I can do is start cutting this thing up and uh, doing my uh, my hard surfacey stuff. But I'm going to lay out some um, I'm going to lay out some lines here, and I usually use the um, curved tube strap just to try to figure out figure out what I'm going to do. So this is thick. Let's make this smaller. And uh, I'm going to start. Let's move it back here. You know what I could do? Let's see. Actually, no. I'm not going to do it this way. I'm going to undo that. Let's delete that. And undo that. Because I like this so much, what I'm going to do is cut it to pieces. I'm going to go back to um, this one. No. I'm gonna delete this one because I don't like it. Okay, keep this one, but I'll duplicate. And now what I can do is hide everything but the green. Use my slice curve and let's try something.
Bear with me. I'm gonna get it. It's gonna work out, you guys. I know it looks wacky now. Just hang in there with me. This. What am I trying to do? Hold on, I want this. It has its own group. Then I want these two as a group. There you go. I want that as a group. Okay. Now let's try it. Did it do it? Did it. Okay. And that's not bad. That's not bad at all, actually. All right, so now what I can do, if I want to, is I can grab a loop. Before I start detailing, though, I want to make sure that this, the shape of this, it looks like it's done some, some things here that I don't necessarily like at the bottom. But I can fix this. We can rebuild it. See, now because I have these loops kind of the way that I want, I can go in and add the, um, the piping and stuff to them. Make them feel a little more hard surfacey. All right, so let's copy this. Copy, copy, copy. Go back to our original mask. I'm going to move this to the bottom because it's old. Old things belong at the bottom, and I will paste the new hotness. Paste, 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 paste this in here. Okay. And then I can just reshape it to fit her head because right now it looks kind of wacky. So, grab the move.
And again, this is why it's good to keep things at a low res, because it's just less stuff to get really kind of screwy when you pull points. If this was subdivided, it would be way messier. sandwich who's hungry. Yeah, I'll take one. Alright, cool. Come on, man. Okay. So now it kind of fits. I can go in and I can... Uh, Let's see what happens if I do a polish by groups, poly groups, see if that makes it feel a little more interesting. Oh, what happened to my, looks like my cut is off. That is it, doesn't matter, it's cool. All right, so let's go to the, um, Deformation. Polished by groups and let's see what happens. There you go. I just don't want it to feel as kind of loose as it does right now. It's okay, it's pushing it in some of the parts where I don't want it to move, but that can always fix that. So now, see when I did that polish by groups, I got that nice little kind of transition around that loop there. It's pretty cool. And I'll define that even further by adding a uh, adding a uh, like a some piping around that as well. So for the back of this, I think that I want this piece to come under her chin and then cut off like right at the base of her base of her skull. So let's see what happens if I let's see if I start moving this in. Yeah, what's going to happen? Kind of a 
like the Iron Man. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the Iron Man thing, but it does a similar deal. Okay. Alright, so that's that. Now, um, let's get that piping around the edge here. I'm just using the age polish to bring back that, that nice flat. sculpt things don't know where to start is there a way how to sculpt things yes learn how to sculpt things sure um, go to the Pixelogic page and uh, go to their ZBrush classroom to get started it's a very good place to start because you can learn the interface and all that stuff and then YouTube is fantastic um, these workshops not workshops but these uh, well, what the devil the kids call them these days? These uh, streams are good too. A lot of streams, a lot of good streams. Don't cross them. Don't cross the streams, man. But yeah, you can go on there and check this stuff out. I learn a lot. All right, so now what I can do is I can go back to this one. No, let's go back. Let's stay on this one because I did some moving. I'll take this, solo it. Okay, one thing I do want to do, like right off the bat, is get a bevel. I don't like what's happening here on her mouth. So I want to slide that edge in. And I can do that just by grabbing the Z modeler and grabbing, uh, hovering over your edge, right? Going to slide, edge loop complete, and then I can just slide this whole edge in, right? And get a nice little bevel. I like see you. And then I can insert a holding edge. And uh, it'll look a little more hard surfacey. let's see. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Okay. It's not perfect, but it's a good start. So now I can go and grab the move tool and kind of bring it back over her nose. Or like, pull it down some, actually. doesn't even make sense to spend too much time on this until I start sculpting the face because it's it's so faceted right now that that's not what the form is going to look like so maybe we do that after I get some of the, uh, the detailing on this mask figured out turn off that now I have a loop all the way over to the edge of the mouth so what I think I'm gonna do Let's, uh, let's, let's add another holding line here. If I want this to be super sharp, I could just crease it. So I'm like, if I just wanted to get rid of these and add a crease here. I just want to make sure it's not like, too sharp. So I'll go to the geometry, go to crease. It's always set to 15 by default, but if I turn that down to like two, and then I crease edge loop complete. And then I turn on my dynamic. See, it's, it's going to be sharper. Hide, hide. See, it's sharper. And it actually is probably a little sharper than I'd want. So I, if I turn down this crease level to like two and then recrease it, it should soften it. Let's turn it down to one. And there you go. All right, but that's too too soft. Let's do two. Okay. Then if I turn the dynamic up one, it looks a little more like what I want. 
Something like that. All right. So the edge that I want to do something cool with is this one. I think what I'll do to start is I'm going to crease this edge. Okay. So now if I turn back on my, or turn off my, you see how it's starting to look a little more hard surface. Uh, and then I can go in and I can add a loop that will give me um, uh, give me a nice little bump out. So let's do that. I'm going to add insert an edge loop here. Okay, I like that. Um, I'm going to do one around the mouth also. And now what I can do is I can go and grab a poly group. No, nope, sorry, I gotta hover over it first. But I can poly group by poly loop. And if I click, of course it picks a color, it's almost the same. See, if I click, then I, I have that whole loop, right, which is nice. And I can do it this way as well. Okay, but I don't want that one, I actually want this one that okay um, and while we're at it let's just do this as well okay I don't know if I'll see that or not but I don't know it's there okay so I want to select this now just this loop easier to delete everything but what I want. Okay. Cool. All right, so I got that. And I don't want the loop to go all the way inside like that, so I just get rid of what I don't want. If I turn on double, it's easier for me to see what I'm doing. Okay, so this is where this piece kind of folds around the geometry because on the inside, I don't want that. Just want this, yep. So regroup it, re polygroup it rather, something that I can see, okay. And now I can go through and I can do this out a little bit. And this is kind of how I do my costumes. Alright, so I would do uh, extrude, polygroup all, polygroup all. And then just bring it up. Give it a bump out. Like C. Now this has a crease on it, so in some areas it's going to be soft and other areas it's going to be hard. I can fix that. But if I turn on dynamic, let's see. Now we have this, right? Which it's raised out way too far. Let's take it down some. Let's take it down a notch. I just want a little bit. Let's see what this looks like. All right, that's close to what I want. You know, um, it's not perfect. What I would probably do at this point is go in and kind of contour this a little better.
All right, now what's happened too is that because of the way that the um, because of the way that some of these loops are running, it gets thin in some areas, and I want it to be consistent all the way around. So this is an instance where instead of doing it this way, what I could do is let's say I got rid of I got rid of this loop. Insert. Alright, that's clean. Actually, let me just back up so that I don't have any at all. No, because I can mess with the contour. I'm going to do that. Okay. Um, got rid of that loop. Got rid of that loop. Okay. So now what I can do is I can grab some of these poly groups and uh, make it so that they're the way that they used to be. Okay, that's not bad. Um, where is, I want that lip to be on its own part too. Okay, all right, that's cool. So that's one thing. this and same deal um, I want this part to be on its own group So now, if I want to have that um, that same piping, um, but I want it to be consistent all the way around, what I can do is I can hide hide this. I want it to go where I want it to go. I want it to go on this piece, right? myself here okay so I want it on everything here right so what I can do now that I have only this shown is I can frame the mesh see that so I have this kind of uh, uh, hooked up to the eye and said hey to everybody yet. let's see thanks sir hey everyone call some brushes back there yeah I have some some uh, some of those as well. Uh, I'll get into them. But for the helmet, I want it to be very hard surface. So um, I got a method. All right, so I frame this, okay? And now if I go back and turn on everything, you see the frame is still there on just the, the magenta part. So now what I can do is I can go to my curve tube or curve snap. So if I use the curve strap, it's going to, um, it's going to fold, but that's okay because I can fix those edges. So now if I just click on here, this is what I get, right? And you're probably saying to yourself, that's way too big, but if I just make the brush size smaller and re-click, it'll make it smaller. Okay, so that's not bad. But now there's way too many segments here. Um, and what I used to do is I used to go in by hand and delete them. Uh, but you don't have to do that if you just go to the stroke and you go to the curve and turn the curve steps up I think Let's undo this. you turn it up you see how thick it is now or not thick but now there's far less curve steps that's good uh, I don't know why it's doing it double 
I do a double thing here. Let's click again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Solo. Alright, I don't know why I did that, but I'm going to fix that corner anyway. So that's fine for that. Then I just click it here. Oh, I got to now click off the curve. Actually, click off the curve. And it will apply it. Um, will this even be seen? Yeah, it will. Um, but I will come back to that. What I want to do now is I want to fix this part. So I'm going to split hidden, or split unmasked rather. Okay. And now I have just what I want to see, which is this. And it looks like Looks like it did it twice here for some reason. I don't know why. Let's do auto group. Or group by normals rather. Yeah, that's exactly what it did. So I want the yellow. Yellow's clean. I want the yellow. I want this. This is wacky. Let's delete this. Delete hidden. Okay. And I don't want the edge. Get rid of the edge. Okay, edge is gone. Delete hidden. Turn off solo. And now what I can do is I can go and contour it so it fits her face properly. Because these segments are larger, it's not going to be such a mess I'm trying to get them to line up with this. This is how I did the, um, I mean, it's pretty much how I do all my superhero stuff. But you get really nice, clean uh, segments, like rather than just using the, uh, like the slice curve and then using um, panel loops and all that. It's very controlled. Center, it's not. What's going on here? X. X go and give it to you. Let's see, mirror. Oh, that's not. That's not. Don't even want to warrant to the mirroring world. Is that open? Yeah, of course it is. If you find that you accidentally click on things and it's doing what you don't want it to do, you can just turn off or make it so it does nothing. Okay, so I can just stitch these areas. I'm supposed to be able to stitch. Stitch, stitch. Stitch, stitch. Why is that there? That's not supposed to be there.
All right. So this may seem like a lot of work, but I'm telling you, when you're done, it's so crispy. It's it's it makes up for the time you spend doing it. It's well worth it. And in fact, you don't even have to worry about lining it up with the surface because what I'm going to do is I'm going to be um, extruding it out. So if it's buried inside, that's even better. You don't have to worry about it not being watertight when you go to do a print. So that's in there. Now what I can do is I can go in and I can shoot it out. <clears throat> this will save because I can't remember the last time I saved. Tool. Oh yeah, what I was doing was I was just sewing, sewing the edges together. If you're wondering. All right, so now if I grab my Z modeler, hover over a face, I can uh, <clears throat> I can either <clears throat> sorry extrude or Q mesh it out. So first I want to make sure it's facing the right way. So I have double turned on. Let's move these on. Let's move them just in the way. Get out of the way. Turn off double. Okay, it's facing the right way. Let's turn back on the model and I can just pull it out. Okay, so I want it to be about that thick. If it's not lining up, I can actually just move things around here. Let's bring this one out rather than pushing that in. I hear it's playing the same music over and over again. Let's get this out of here. Yeah, when I have time to like build a playlist, you won't have to worry about that. I've been, like I said, I've been busy doing other stuff lately. So now if I was to turn on dynamic to show you the smoothing, this would turn into a tube. Um, maybe not so much. Okay. It's actually not that bad. It's not that bad. I thought it was going to be way more. It looks like I have an edge loop on one of these edges, but not on the other. So let's, let's do something, shall we? Let's loop a couple of areas here. If I put on a couple of uh, holding edges here, that'll keep that corner for me. And then if I put on a loop here, like add a loop here, I should get something a little more like what I want. Okay. Like that. Alright, 
Um, starting to look a little more like Captain Marvel just with that little helmet thing. Alright, now in the picture she has some segments that are doing this kind of a thing, which is kind of cool. Um, I'll worry about those later though. Let's do... I want to give her her sash before anything else because I like that that sash is like that's kind of marvel y'all so I'm going to do that by just adding a great big fat curve strap around her waist she's subdivided so if I grab something that doesn't have subdivision levels like say this arm piece right there is no higher subdivision level I can still make a curve tube around her. If you're not familiar with ZBrush, what happens is if there's subdivision levels, you can't do certain things. And one of them is using uh, like a curve tube strap or a curve tube. Um, but if I grab a piece of geometry that is that does not have higher sub D levels, I can come in anywhere and draw something technically. Curve tube. Tap curve strap. Mm, oh, is it because I have it up so high? I have to go back and change this. Yeah, I have the curve step too high. If I turn that down, see now I can go in and I can make a. I can make a strap or a. Uh, sorry. Make a thing. It's a thing, you guys. Let's make the brush smaller. Now I can go in and draw this around her waist. Her hip is just too large. It's not letting me do it. All right. Can I close that? You know what? If I just hold shift, I should just be able to draw it around her waist. Should be able to. Right, shift right. It's not doing it. I wonder if it's because I'm not on this piece of geo. Yeah, that's probably it. Alright, so let's do this. Sub tool. Let's grab her. Let's clone this, right? Let's do a clone. Now, this is just the suit. Let's go to the lower sub D level. I think I have layers on. Yeah, so we gotta stop recording. I can see what it looks like without the layer. See, ooh, oh, look at that. All right, turn off that or bake it rather. And then I can get rid of my higher subdivision level. So I can go back down to lower, delete higher. Delete higher sub D levels. All right, so now this is as high as it is. It doesn't go any higher than this. So now, technically, I should be able to go in and grab the curved strap, hold down shift, there you go. See how it makes a loop all the way around her now? Which is nice, because I can do like this deal. Mm, check that out. All right, and I can change the angle, I can center the gizmo on it, and I can position it where I want it, which is pretty sweet. Okay. I will say that I like this. Okay, doesn't matter, it doesn't line up, don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. I'm gonna split, unmasked. Okay, let's go back to the subtool, go to the belt, hide the body. Should have polygroups. Doesn't have polygroups, that's okay. It's okay. Group by normals. Okay, and what that'll do is every time there's a plane change, it makes that its own its own uh, polygroup. So all I'm concerned with is the outer face here. So if I grab that, okay, that's what I want. I group it. Now I just have that loop. I can delete everything else. I don't care about anything else. Just that. Okay. 
So now what I can do is move her out of the way. Let's just get out of the way. Get out of the way, man. Alright, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. I have issues. Oh crap, I moved. I have issues doing clock symmetries. Okay, yeah, you don't want to have symmetry, it also looks like four wrinkles. Yes, she's still going to be undead. But once I get the face kind of how I like, I'll do it as a layer so, you know, I can have her as a regular. And say cool body. Okay. Um, see you later, man. Alright. Um, so now because this is just the shell, I can move. I can move this and position it how I want. She has this kind of a, a really cool sash that just goes around her body. This is why I work at like a low res because. I can do things like this. If this was subdivided, it would be a tremendous pain to be able to move these things. But because it's not, it's fairly easy, painless. So, if you're anything like me when I first started sculpting, you can't wait to jump to the higher subdivision levels and start detailing, but I mean, whether it's anatomy, or clothing, whatever. It just makes way more sense to be patient and get your forms right first. Just like anything else. I mean, if you're drawing or painting, I'd tell you the same thing. scream whether they're happy or sad they just talk it they're so loud I can't stand it it's driving me crazy the walls here are paper thin so I hear everything doesn't make sense that, that it's going that way. It should be going the other way, actually. Hold on. Should be facing this way. I think. That makes more sense, I think. Doesn't line up anymore, but that's okay. Because it's so low poly, it's easier. It's easy to just move this stuff. And I can have it feeling like it's moving in the air. Like she's flying, this thing is whipping all around. That's one thing I was thinking about the other day. I was watching, uh, like I watch all the, anything that has superheroes on it, I watch it, right? So I'm watching all the CW crap. I mean, shows. And uh, the Supergirl, uh, thing I never figured out that costume because if she's wearing you know it's bad enough you're wearing a cape and flying around like that cape would just be whipping all over the place but if you're wearing a skirt no way that skirt isn't just whipping all over the place like it just probably would just blow right off these are things I think about but of course it's always in place everything is in perfect place So 
I say all that to say this. This is gonna. My thing is gonna be flying around, whipping around, man. All right. So now, let's grab the Z modeler. Go in and delete some of these edges. Add some where I need them. Maybe here, where it kind of contours the hip a little more. Right. Um, Does that now she has um, she has some pieces that come off of this so I'll make one good one and then kind of duplicate it okay good faces. I'm going to extrude this, right? Let's see if it lets me do that. Close. But no. Alright, what I can do is I can just go in and select uh, polygroup. Let's see. Polygroup, single group. Single poly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there you go. That's all I want is this piece. I'll delete hidden and turn off solo. Now I can kind of get this thing looking how I want it. Right, because I want two of them. If I hold down Alt and just drag with the gizmo, I get another one. Right, and then at this point, one of them is masked, so I can make that its own polygroup. And I can um, only manipulate, you know, one at a time. Still with me? It's cold. I mean, cold. It's quiet in here. It's also cold in here. Cold and quiet. All right. Um, so now I can just kind of move this so it doesn't look exactly like the other one. Play around with it.
place it where I want. So this is what I had in mind for the sash, All right? And then in the picture, she has a um, she has like a little medallion thing holding it in place. So let me just go ahead and make that right now while I'm here. And what I can do is I could do an insert cylinder, but I'm just going to do just to be really fast, I'm going to duplicate these and turn them into a Q cylinder that is kind of oriented somewhat the way that I want. And um, use this instead. Right. Let's hide her so I can see what I'm doing. doesn't matter the size of it because I'm only concerned with um, the round area I'm going to do the same thing just extrude just like I'm gonna extrude everything else on this kind of get this where I want it Extruding some of these things and detailing them. Oh, these neighbors. These people are the worst. Can you guys hear this? Probably not because you got the music. That's what I need. Something with the last thing right here, so I don't hear anything. Alright, cool. So now I can give this some, um, let's see. Yeah, just keeping it low is, you know, I have a choice to have a nice top. Which am I most proud of? Uh, I don't know, probably, probably the trap jaw. I think that's probably the most time I've spent on a piece, and you kind of can see it. But, I don't know, like I don't really, if I finish a piece that means I'm proud of it, and I have very few pieces that I've completely finished. Everything is almost done. I think the other thing too is, you know, I don't really get paid to use ZBrush unless I'm using it as reference for my illustration. So I know that if I had to do a piece and was being commissioned or, you know, was doing it for like a, a statue company, I'd probably be way more uh, apt to finish it. Can you guys hear these people? Okay, all right, um, so let's extrude this. Just give it some thickness. Key mesh, polygon ball. Same thing with this one. Oh, you know what? 
I don't want to Q mesh because what happens is if these faces intersect, it does a weird union thing. I don't want to do that, so I'll just do an extrude. <laughs> These people are screaming so loud, it's crazy. That's what I live with now. to have yeah that's fine that's fine all right so let's just add some some loops just to give this thing a little bit of uh, something for me to sculpt on here and hold the edge same deal for these Take now. Just gonna merge these all down together because they're none of them are subdivided, so it doesn't matter. But uh, let's see, merge down. Yes. And merge down. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to auto group. All right. So now I can pretty much easily get what I want to get to. And let's see what it looks like if I turn on dynamic subdivision level. Now you see how it gets really thin on the edges, at least on the sash. That's because I don't have anything holding that edge, right? So what I would do is I don't want it to be creased because I don't want a hard edge there. It's cloth. But what I do want to do is just maybe add another insert, another loop here. I don't have any loops on the inside. That's a that's an issue as well. So let's add some loops on the inside. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay. So now, let's put one here. All right, so now it should be a little better. Okay, all right. Still looks stiff, but that's okay. The other thing I can do now, if I want to, and I think I do, is I can uh, I can inflate the top ring of this. So I'm going to go in and polygroup the loop, all right? So that just gives me the top and the bottom. Okay, if I just click it, it does that inflate deal. I mean, I'm sorry, it does the poly loop uh, deal. So now I can hover over the face and go to inflate, poly group all, so it's going to get the top and the bottom, and if I just drag it out, it looks like it's just dragging it. It doesn't look like it's doing anything other than dragging it, but if I do dynamic, it, it also kind of balloons the edge a little bit, kind of inflates it, which I'd have probably a more of an effect. Let's do this. I'm going to give myself another couple loops here and polygroup, uh, polyloop, these two as well. Okay, uh, I want a holding line for this inside too because that looks, I don't, I don't want it to pucker out. Come on, dude. Give me the edge, there it is. Okay, all right. So now if I do an inflate, you'll see more of a difference. So inflate, polygroup all, see what it's doing? That's what we want. Okay, and you can go as far as you want. I just wanted a little bit of a inflate on that edge. And I'm gonna do a similar deal with the, uh, the, the sash part over here also. I just realized I don't have anything holding these edges from just kind of disappearing down here. 
So let's put that like that. Um, I'm gonna be sculpting these, so I'm gonna hold off on doing the, the inflate to that part. But if I go here now, okay, it's not bad. Um, I got my little button thing there holding it. And I can copy this, let's call this rename. Sash. Copy and I'm doing it time. Done it four, right? One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, yeah. All right, that's about another half an hour. If you guys have any questions about any of this stuff, let me know, please. Okay. All right. So now what I can do is I can kind of fit this to her a little better. And I can start sculpting in some detail. Hate them <laughs> so much. about the um, these pieces here they're they want to be longer so I'm just going to do this a number of ways but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and uh, delete these loops here just the ones on this span and then uh, poly group, single poly, this one, and this one, but let's change it because that's that would affect those those other areas, right? And then now what I can do is I can just grab these and uh, extrude poly group, and extrude like that, okay. So then I can go and uh, add some more loops and get the general shape that I want. So I think maybe this comes back up. Like that, maybe this part comes down. Like that. So it starts to do like a little twist I can even grab the gizmo and make it twist. Okay, and then maybe for this one, this goes back. So I just grab here, rotate this back some, and maybe it goes down some. Some and maybe it twists a little bit this way. All right. And then later on, I can worry about the actual, you know, it getting more. Like maybe I'll just, I'll just do it all here. Just add a couple more spans. One, two, three, three, four. And then, uh, like that. Okay, and then I want to hold those edges. Hold, hold, 
Hold. So now when I divide this, I have something to sculpt with, right? Or sculpt on, rather. All right, so if I turn on dynamic, Creased area means that I have one too many. Um, uh, see that that extra um, edge loop. If I delete that, it'll smooth it out. So let's delete that and delete this one as well. And then it's nice and smooth. Right, Let's do a little cloth sculpting on this part because we can. My UI is crazy, Mike. Really? Wait, you hear them too? You can hear them. I just, sometimes I have to make sure that I'm not going crazy. They're not even mad. This is how they talk, man. That's how they sound. All the happy, sad, all the time. This is what they sound like. It's freaking ridiculous. Soundproofing. Yeah. I shouldn't have to. I keep telling the people at the, the office to move their ass. They're, we'll move you. I'm not the one making all this noise, man. Move these guys. What brush is this? Just the move? You don't want to hear mad. Yeah, no. It's, I mean, it's the same volume. I can't tell really when they're mad or happy. I I hear the yelling and then I hear laughing, so I'm assuming they're not mad. But this is a woman, believe it or not, and she's just chilling. This is just how she talks. All right. So once we get some wrinkles in here, this is gonna look good. Okay, right now it's looking stiff. Real stiff. Let's auto group. Okay. Turn off this. Let's turn off dynamic. And I want a little bit of, uh, I want a little bit of resolution. So it's only 516 polys right now. Let's, let's put, that's good. Okay, not too much, just a little. Okay. And uh, let's grab the standard, turn on my lazy mouse. I only want to see this. I want to see nothing else. And I'm just going to sculpt in some. Sculpt in some fabricy looking stuff. This piece. And 
again, keeping that low, keeping that low resolution, because what this is going to do for me. Now this is thin, so, but I, I do want it to affect both sides. I was going to say I might want to turn on back face masking, but uh, I want it to be low so that when I do subdivide it. I have the basic forms here, but I'm just going to add to the detail. And this is what I do for muscles, clothing, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, stay low, stay low. Resist the temptation to subdivide, you guys. It's only going to get better when you add resolution if your forms are right. If your forms are wrong, whack! jump down in my subdivision levels. That was a Z modeler, the one that I used to make the um, put in the edge loops and all that. Let's see, let's see modeler. you guys use the gizmo or the transpose line to like do posing and stuff but you got to make sure you have that pivot um, center area exactly where you want it or else you're not going to get the desired effect also um, it needs to be right where the um, right where the mask stops Something that looks organic. Is it too wrong? Alright, um, it looks 
down here, like it's starting to do a little pinching, so maybe if I just inflate it a little bit. Inflate, inflate. Okay, smooth. Inflate, 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 smooth. Inflate. That's gonna give me that, that look that I want. Hey Brandy, you're a robot, right? Yeah, thought so. She hung up. Imagine that. She said she was a real person. Okay. Um. All right, let's put the sash down. So now, let's get some detail on the sash. Is, I always start off with just like the, the standard brush. So now I can um, divide it again. Okay, and you can see, like, it just stays really clean if you do this, do it this way. Like, if I jumped up too fast and started laying in these details, then it just it gets wonky, you know. Like even something like putting in the inflated edge, it just is smoother when you have less geometry there. And then when you subdivide, it's just super clean. All about that clean, clean top of we all. All I'm doing now is just going in and inflating some of these edges. Time. Another 15 minutes. This thing is folded over itself in some places. Turn on my lazy mouse. And just start pulling in some areas that I want to look folded. I had a friend.
friend of mine the other day, I did this, and uh, they didn't see me doing it. And they asked me, you know, had I done it in Marvelous Designer, which is to me is like a, like a giant compliment. You know, if you think that I did the folds in Marvelous Designer, then clearly I've done something right. But uh, I enjoy um, I enjoy doing like sculpting folds so much that I don't even really use marvelous that much. Also, my top I was nice and clean. So then at that point, if I really want this thing to look like it's tucked under, what I can do is I can grab it because it's still pretty low. And I can just kind of pull this into the fold. So enough of these and it starts to look like real fabric. too crispy it's not going to look like an organic fold. seeing that in some of these places I need a little more a little more geometry so I'm going to give it to me give it to myself just divide once more and you see when you divide if you have like some pretty good forms there it just makes it really look just super clean really really yeah, Pablo has some dope, dope brushes. I'm on in two weeks, Danny. Happy Trails and Happy Trails Pinch are brushes that, um, my friend uh, Brad and I made. Um, we basically took we took um, I think it 
was the orbs crack and did some modifications to them I think it was orbs crack and it just gives you a nice kind of a pinch and inflate to give you the uh, to give you this kind of effect All right now I like kind of like some of these This is one of those things where jumping down to a lower subdivision level and finding your forms helps. Having that option is really good. So when I come back up, it's not um, it's not messy. I don't need it to be that high here. The other thing I use when I'm doing fabric is uh, H polish to give me like some nice flats, which fabric will tend to do from time to time. Especially where it folds over on itself. All right, so it's funny. Like her face is <laughs> is mad chunky, and then I have detail in the uh, in the belt here. But so I'll go sometimes. Circle back around her face later. It's really nice to mix it up, you know, like some areas have it look kind of inflated, balloony, and then other areas look flat. Like cloth just does a whole lot of weird, un, you know, just, just organic stuff that makes it look like cloth. So mixing it up, not having it <clears throat> be all of one thing or another really just kind of gives you that look that you're looking for. I think. Well, the costume is going to be form fitting, so it's not going to matter. It's not like she has a loose, a loose uniform. It's really kind of like a, a bodysuit. So sometimes I, I I do these things to inform the rest of the sculpt. You know, um, let me do something here. Uh, how am I doing? Document, draw, layer, a create. Okay. So um yeah, by getting the by getting this sash on her early, I can decide uh whether the gesture on her body is right, or I wanna tilt it, you know, one way or another, or if it's she's leaning enough forward or something like that you know what I mean like it, it helps me figure out the rest of the uh, both the uniform and the pose so that's why I do what I do okay. 
Let's see. something a little more dynamic I'm looking for something we can put on the YouTube on the YouTube on this page until I tilt her head the right direction she just looks like not invested you know what I mean So this is what I would normally do to submit to a client um, when I'm doing the illustration, and uh, then I can give them a, a like a a contact sheet of different angles, and they can see and be like, oh, you know, I like that. I maybe move something, the hand a little more this way, or do whatever. And I can instead of having to do multiple drawings and having to worry about proportion and all this other stuff, I can do my stat or my character get it in a rough pose, light it the way I want, send it to the person with the clothing, and uh, and just save a whole lot of time. So that's kind of what I'm doing with Hasbro for a lot of my packaging for the toys. And and they, they love it because they're, they're used to artists just giving them thumbnails, and this is much more specific. So it's part of the reason why I love ZBrush, right? And then if I wanted to, I could take this and do a paint over, straight paint over, and try some different concepts for costumes. In fact, I think I'll do that next time. Take this and do a draw over to figure out what I want to have be like hard surface and what I want to be soft and things of that nature. But um, yeah, I think we got a lot done today. We got the helmet, uh, the sash, and her hair makes more sense now with the helmet on, I think. Um, so yeah, we're coming along pretty good on this thing. All right? Uh, anybody have any questions before I get out of here? Show us your chisel, 3D cloth. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, let me save this real quick. Um, export. This is gonna be small, I know. Let's see, export. Because it's only half the document size. That's another thing I always forget. Like if I look at this and do actual, uh, I guess because I baked everything, you're not gonna see. It's hard to see the top because the light is like right in my face. Let's bake all the or merge these layers yes and then I can clear them all right uh, T okay so if I was going to use my chisel that's under where's the brushes brush 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 my brushes uh, cloth, my cloth, chisel 3D. All right, so I kind of made this when I was doing the uh, the Gatchaman stuff. But if I show you, I have some wrinkles that I made, right? That if I wanted to, um, I don't know that they're gonna work with this because I have subdivision levels. Will they? Oh yeah, they do. Right, but now I can just drag these out. Right, like that. So let's say over here I want something that is more like, uh, let's see, yeah, let's say this one's more like this. You know, I could just come over here and twist it around the way that I want, make it as big as I want. Maybe it's coming from this button if I didn't have that there already. You know, I just drag it out. Let's say I'll do it on this one. Alright, so now I can come in and I can drag this out. Like that. So, these are just some 
some brushes that I sculpted and made into VDMs. Um, and they're really good for, I have one, let's, this isn't even the right one. If I grab this one, chisel wrinkle, is this the one? I think this is the one that has all the stuff on it. Yeah, yeah. So if I wanted to go and add like, uh, you know, her logo, the Captain Marvel logo, I could just, depending upon how much resolution I have, like if I divided this again a couple times, I could just drag this out. Clean, right? Uh, so anyway, that's that. I think my time is about up. Ashley is usually on the same day as me, so she's probably on later. You guys definitely come back and check her out. She's very dope. Um, is it possible to do that with a curve? No. The VDM brushes are kind of, you drag them out in place. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'll be back. I'll be back in a couple weeks, uh, you guys. And I might be on uh, on my uh, Twitch sometime soon. If you look at the top of my page, do I even have it on there? Do I have it on there? Hmm, I don't. Border, border, ZBrush Live. Where is it? Huh, okay. That's not right. There's supposed to be a border at the top. Anyway, go to, uh, go to, um, T2K on Twitch, and if you're not, give me a give me a follow, please, and uh, and you can catch me doing this on my on my time. All right, so you guys take it easy, and uh, I'll see you next time. I'll try to be a little more a little more excited next time. Um, but uh, yeah, in the meantime, you guys you guys be easy. All right, later, peoples, peace.